Welcome to Muddy River News This Week. Furnished by Harvey's, I'm Bob Goff. My guest today is Louis Deemers, and Louis just turned 100 years old, and he's packed about 200 years worth of life into those 100 years. Louis, thanks for coming and seeing me today. You're quite welcome. Does 100 feel any different than 99? Yes, it does. How's, how so? One year over. <laughs> <laughs> I walked into that one. Um, I think, you know, when I look at your uh, your resume, of course, I know you just recently celebrated. You had a nice party at the Optimist Club, provided us some pictures and stuff. Uh, but I think the amazing thing is you served our country in not one but two wars, World War II as well as the Korean War. Talk a little bit about your experience there. Where did you serve during World War II? You might summarize by the Pacific, everything in the Pacific. We were operating with the Enterprise. You ever heard of the mm -hmm. Enterprise? Yep. Okay. We were on ship maneuvers when they hit Pearl Harbor. Otherwise, I, we anchored uh, our buoy. Uh, destroyers have buoys. They don't have docks like the big boys. Mm -hmm. And anyhow, the Arizona was probably from here to cross the street from us. And you know the, mm -hmm. the feed on that. It hit the ammunition dump and really... Anyhow, that's, that's, we were on the maneuvers with the, with the Enterprise, the Yorktown, and the Saratoga. And um, we, we turned around, naturally, and headed back towards Pearl, but we, weren't, we were peacetime Navy then. Mm -hmm. We didn't have enough ammunition, enough reserve fuel, or nothing. So, needless to say, we came in, there was about 12 inches of crude oil, it looked like a real, and we run through that. And first thing they did, they got a, a detail go, all the, all the men available, plus the officers, everybody pitched in. We went out to ammunition dump and, and got, uh, we supplied it with ammo, live stuff, you know, and current stuff too. And, uh, and from there on, we went hunting for, for the Japs. We, um, we, the United States mobilized pretty quick, quickly after that happened, yeah, right? Sure. We were, you know, uh, the, I believe the quote was uh, from uh, the Japanese was, I, I'm afraid we've awakened a sleeping giant, and That's they right. certainly did. They yeah, sure did. You better believe it. They regret it. They, they, they had friction. Uh, Japan had a lot of friction, too, on this decision, and I guess the higher up overruled, like, like this country does. But... Uh, that, I don't know how much how much details you want, but uh, we went jap hunting. That was, that was about it. We started out of Marshall and Gilmore Islands and went on, and um, went up and down the, the China coast and everything else looking for japs. How did how was that uh, when we had victory in Japan Day? What was uh, what was that feeling like? It had to be kind of a relief. I oh imagine. yes, it was definitely. And um, they did a flyover. Uh, our airplanes, the, the, the sky literally turned black. The, the, the carrier airplanes were out at sea someplace, top secret, but uh, the, the flyover, the carriers, and then the, the, the next, and then the big heavy, the, the B-17 and the B-29s. I'm pretty sure we had B-29s then. I guess it, it's been so long ago. But anyhow, then then the Air Force came in, and uh, we I know there was thousands of our airplanes that 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 sign, and I saw we were anchored pretty close to the Missouri, and uh, we were privileged to go go in to Vicksburg. I was on that the light cruiser. And Missouri is where they surrendered, correct? That's right. They came out in a little tugboat. I mean, dilapidated. I mean, we we got them all pretty much, all the ships, and the, the big guys came out too. And our our carrier airplanes just sunk it right away. But uh, so then, did you did you uh, go to civilian life, or uh, then after that for a bit? Yeah, yeah. I I joined the reserves. Okay. And that was a mistake. <laughs> Why was that? <laughs> I, I got drafted right away. <laughs> you had to go back, right? You had to go, go back, back to Korea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, what, was the, what was the biggest difference but for you between serving uh, our country during World War II and during Korea? 
well, career, I got, you might say, shore duty. I ended up at Great Lakes. Mm. They couldn't find a place for me decent. They run me all the way out to Treasure Island. Wow. And couldn't, couldn't, you know where Treasure Island mm -hmm. is? Okay, good. And uh, I, I stayed there for about a week. They didn't have nothing for me, so they sent me back to Great Lakes, and they found something for me to do. <laughs> they, they, they hit the panic button, in other words. They called too many people up, but more time, who sure. knows? Yeah. Well, I just, again, thank you for your service in both of those wars. Yeah. As part of this, you are also a member of the Illinois Aviation Hall of Fame. What did you like flying? Just about anything I get a hold of. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had a, I bought a um, Ronica Champ, no, wait a minute, no, a Chief, a Chief mm -hmm. for $400. Wow. It had less than 300 hours on it. It belonged to a Swede. And he wanted to get, he was getting too old to fly, but uh, that was my airplane. For, and then I, I traded in a, later on on a Cessna 120, and then uh, then I got to work, started to work for HECO. This is quite later, and, and uh, we had a couple of charters. We had a contract with UPS and all that. That's all stuff unrelated to, to um, is it a war, but uh, that's what I did into and then I put in for, for the airlines. Uh, we had three airlines at that time. We had Brenna, TWA, and Ozark. I remember that. Yeah. I remember yeah. my grandparents flying to, I, I think they flew to Puerto Rico, and I think they flew from Ozark from Quincy to St. Louis then flew to Puerto Rico. I remember yeah. that back in the 70s. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I, had, I put in for that, and I put in for the CAA. They, they would accept the people. Later on, that became the FAA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, that's the one I chose because I, I knew we didn't have enough business to support three airlines. I mean, who is it in Poland? But yeah, I mean, it's, uh, we, I, Quincy's, uh, you know, we have a rich airline tradition, but uh, we've sure had our, our ups and downs, yeah. no pun intended, uh, trying yeah. to especially keep commercial service over the last few years. Yeah, yeah. We work for the FAA, but you also, you were, were also awarded, given a master pilot designation by them. What does that mean? Well, I trained a lot of other pilots and and we did seminars at Mattoon, Illinois for mm -hmm. 29 years. We go over there and fly with other people on, on weekends. And uh, I did that for, I think, 29 years. And that was part of it and just other things around locally, too. So. Mattoon had a, a base at one time, right? Did I'm they? not sure about that. This was the civilian operation. But a civilian yeah. operation you were part of then, OK. Yeah. yeah. Um, and aside from, from flying, you, you, do you still swim any? Well, I haven't for about four years now with this COVID. Sure, and okay. Keep, but but, you, but you, were, you, were, you, have, you are a Guinness World Record holder as being the oldest certified lifeguard yeah, at one time. Yeah, I, I heard a number once of, of, I don't know how many millions of people. I take in India and everything in the world. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I, yeah, I would think, uh, yeah, did co I guess... For any, you know, the, a lot of us, COVID was a kind of thing that really, you know, active people, you know, it, it slowed us down a little bit. And I guess with, you know, especially if you're a little more susceptible as you get a little older, I guess it's something, you, you got to be careful with that yeah, stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You miss swimming? Yes, I do, very much so. Yeah, I was a lifeguard. I, I start swimming, God, way back in, in the old, the old, um, the old Indian Mound. Yeah, I've yeah. seen pictures of that. It had that yeah. big concrete, what, island, I guess, for That's lack right. of a better term, in the middle yeah. of it? It had logs around it. If uh -huh. you swam out to the tower, you were something. That was a challenge when you're, when you're young, you know. <laughs> so I, but I, I lifeguard just about every place in Quincy that I can think of. I think I missed one, maybe. But uh, I, I was even out of soldier's home lifeguarding out there. They got a pool. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I lifeguard one time down at the, um, we, used to, we used to swim in the nude all the time back in those days. Oh, you know, oh my gosh, Louie. I don't, don't want to hear that kind of stuff. I know. No, but that's fine. I'm that, just kidding. That, that, so um, so where, do, you, do you still live at, at home? Where do you live now? I live at my own home. Still yeah. live in your own home? Yeah. And your, your daughter helps you out a little bit? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. 
Well, that's great. Um, again, I just wanted to take the opportunity to say again, thank you for your service and uh, your life. You are you are an example for for one to live a good, full, long yeah, life. Yeah. And uh, I, uh, I I hope you make it another hundred. I do too. It's not not, not likely. The odds are against me, but uh, I'm gonna try. Let's put it that way. Well, it's great to talk to you, sir. Yeah. No, we've been married sixty-seven and a half years. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I lost my wife. We well, took her at home too, Al, uh, Mary and me. Well, yeah. uh, again, I just uh, thank you for your thank you for your service and best wishes. And again, I hope you c continue continue living, sir, yeah. and grow a full life. Yeah, I'd do it again if I had the chance. <laughs> yeah. It's all Back. the time. Oh, one more time, sir. Go ahead, finish up. What, did you have something else to say? Hey, what? Did you have something else to say? Yeah, I was going to say. Back in those days, the whole country, they come together. Yep. They one didn't go in the service, they went in the factories and stuff mm -hmm. like that. We need women, and we needed all hands. That is a old Navy expression. All hands pitched in, and it paid off. Yeah. We had to slow down one general. He wanted to keep going. I won't mention his name, but he, he lived in Australia. But... Uh, <laughs> Well, I tell you what, uh, that's that's uh, that kind of spirit. Something this country could sure use some more of these oh, days. Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, we, are, we we definitely have some divisions. So, well, again, thanks again. I appreciate it. You're quite welcome. That's all the time we have for now. I'm Bob Goff. We'll see you next week.